What's up guys? Xiao Style here. I got another video here for you guys and this time it's something that I think is very very cool. Alright so um, I'm a big fan of you know cartoon style VFX you know uh, just I really like the look of it. Now about a year ago um, I did a video about how to make this uh, cartoon style uh, fire right using uh, using stock footage from like Action Essentials right from Video Copilot. And uh, yeah, I actually got some good you know, response from it, you know. Uh, I really do like the look of it. I'm pretty happy with the results. But uh, yeah, it's been over a year and pretty much, you know, I've been busy with other shit. And like, uh, I've been wanting to make something similar, but with uh, with smoke and like other elements, you know, with this style of um, cell shaded or tune style, you know, 2D look, right? And I got some good comments, you know. And if, this one guy, he's a professional animator and he tells me that... Um, I just saved them about 10 hours or more of work, you know, using this method with the, the 2D look, right? So that's a pretty, really awesome. So, so based off that, you know, I want to keep it going and uh, want to see how much more I can do using this uh, effect, you know. And uh, yeah, I came across this method, and, you know, it's a good like explosion, and it's all like you know cartoon style. Okay, so I did some research and like uh, you know looked up like cell shaded smoke on you know Google the images and I tried to find something as a reference that you know um, I I liked and I found this image. Uh, now this is Blender actually it says right here, uh, and pretty much you know they made it using the cell shaded look and I, but overall this is kind of like the overall look that I'm going for. Uh, pretty much minimal colors you know mainly two tone. Uh, this one you can see some highlights but I'm, at the moment I uh, cannot do that. But here's a better image. Uh, it's just low quality, excuse that. But as you can see, it pretty much is only two tones. You know, you got like a darker color and then a lighter card color, right? So you got some like, you know, lines going through and all this stuff. But like I said, um, I wanted to keep something similar to this look, right? So to make this uh, look work to begin with, I needed some form of assets. Now, originally I started with actual fired footage from like Action Essentials, but there's way too much transparencies and highlights and whatnot it wasn't consistent so I, was, I had a hard time trying to get the look I wanted using actual explosions from uh, Video Copilot right however a lot of trial and error I actually came across this method by um, just by trying out and as I used like an ink drop uh, footage right so um, any stock footage of ink drop should work however what you want to look for is in this case as you can see it's pretty thick very solid you know good high quality and also I think what helps the most is that um, as you can see the progress of the ink drop it has this like mushroom cloud you know happening as you know the ink keeps going down towards the water right so you kind of want that to simulate you know the smoke resistance as it's been exploded and dispersed into the atmosphere type of thing right so um, I got this stock footage from uh, cyber web effects you know I have the link in the description and you know thanks for him for making this he has a download link, but this is like 60 frames per second. This is a 60 FPS um, stock footage, and I don't need that much. So, oh man, I just used uh, I just used the add-on from uh, Firefox, the video download helper. So I just got that, and this is I got like a 720p version of this, so that works as well. But either way, be sure to check out his page and uh, you know leave a like. All right, so back on After Effects, I'm gonna create a new comp. So, just to keep it simple, 1280 by 720. Alright. Now, since we're going to do a cartoon style VFX, we want to keep the frame rate somewhat low so we can have a, a bit of a choppy look, right? And also, just a warning, this is going to eat up a lot of your memory. So, I'll definitely invite you to direct all your cache files and preview files to an area that has high storage or that has uh, fast read and writes. You know, if you have that available on your computer. Because, yeah, it's going to eat up memory pretty badly. Let's do 20 seconds for now. Cartoon explosion. So I have a Twitter account, at um, Joe underscore editing. You know, I have the link in the description. But, um, see, I recently shared this picture of, like, you know, I have a SSD. Uh, I have an Evo 840, I believe. Yeah, that um, I have it set up specifically for my media and cache files. And as you can see here, when I was doing all my um, testing to find this method to do a cartoon smoke, it's just the cache files just <laughs> filled up my SSD, almost 240 gigabytes of it, right? So, yeah, like I said, um, I definitely would invite you to create, to invest in having a dedicated storage for um, your media and cache preview files, especially if you do a lot of After Effects stuff. 
yeah because it's gonna it takes up a lot of space <laughs> right so all right back in after effects we got our you know composition set up um i got a 720p just to keep it simple and here's the ink drop all right so i'm gonna scrub through here and click here to create an endpoint move the timeline till somewhere around here I don't want that much yeah that's good because in this clip um, you know they keep dropping more and more ink so you know I really don't need that much not for the not for me or this tutorial at the moment so just this one clean solid you know ink drop is gonna work well so click here to overlay it all right, let's trim down our uh, timeline sequence. Right click, trim comp to work area. There you go. Now I always like to name my my layers. In this case, I'm just gonna call this let's call this matte layer. And what I want to do is I want to get rid of the white. So find a good spot here. I'm gonna get a luma key. I'm gonna get a luma key, drop it in there, select key out brighter. Now increase the threshold, and as you can see, it's our uh, ink drop starts to appear. So not too much, obviously, just till you see all the white background disappear. So that's good. Do an edge feather about a one, just to get rid of that, like. Uh, those jagged lines that we had going. Anyways, we're gonna refine the mount later, so it's not that important at the moment. At the moment. All right. So now that we have this, I'm gonna right click, pre-compose, and I'm just pre-composing this to uh, you know have the mount to have a composition with its own uh, alpha layer, right? We call this base comp. Move all attributes to new composition. Hit OK. Boom. All right. Here's where the fun starts. <coughs> Well, since the moment I touched the mouse, it's fun, but now let's go for a tent. Excuse the gardener outside if you hear that. See, so drop in the tent, you know, and then you're going to get a levels. Here, color correction, levels, drop that in there. Now, what I want to do here is basically I want to make it more. This is pretty flat, you know, you got your light darks here and light whites so pretty much I want to make it more defined I want to make the whites brighter and the blacks darker right so so a good example is right here in the center see how you have a lot of like uh, how you have a lot of shadows or uh, just a gradient of uh, the black here so we want to kind of get rid of that Let's take something like that just increase the blacks All right, so, so far so good. Now what you want to do is pretty much we want to flip this, right? So I'm going to hit R on the keyboard and rotate rah, rotate this 180 degrees. So there you go. You got so far we got this going. Now we duplicate our base comp here. Select it. Go to edit. Duplicate. Then on the duplicated layer, we want to hit. So select hard mix as a transfer mode. Now the reason why you want to select it as a hard mix is because it kind of like creates, uh, it gets rid of any like um, gradients that we have from like light to um, bright, right? So in this case, see how we have like, you know, these sections right here are still somewhat, um, with the black is kind of transparent, it's more gray. So with a hard mix, kind of gets rid of that and makes it more solid, right? And this is still, you know, fixable. So if you were to go here into your, um, say like the top comp, you can adjust the levels and you can increase the amount of blacks that you have here. Same thing with your base, your original base comp, you can increase it. So, so just keep that in mind. You're able to like work on this, you know, later, depending how much or how little you want in the sense of the detail of the cloud. So I'm pretty happy with that. So you guys can mess with that. All right. So once this is done, select both comp and base comp. 
right click see pre-compose that so we're gonna say just say small comp And I just pre compose all this to make it simpler. So once that's done, let's get the tent again. Now going back to my uh, cell shaded cartoon reference here, see pretty much I wanted like you pretty much want the same color, just had a different like shade. Obviously the same color, but you know just darker or lighter. So that's what I'm gonna be doing here, right? So for the tent. Because I want to use minimal colors. So since we have two colors here, which is nothing but black and white, I'm gonna turn the black one and more of a kind of a dark dirt brown. Let's see. This is all up to you, really. You guys can mess around with it and do whatever you want. And with the white, let's see. Kind of like the same color, but we want it lighter. Yeah, I'm liking that. So far, so good. Now, because it's a ding drop, it could be pretty slow. So what, what I do is um, right click on your uh, small comp. This is pretty much why I you know, put everything in one comp to make it simpler. Uh, I did a time, go to enable time remapping. And let's just increase this to, uh, let's just say up to, let's just say four seconds. That way everything's faster. There you go. A little too fast. Let's go more up to six seconds. Yeah, that's looking good. All right. All right, so now if you zoom in here, you can pretty much see that there's kind of like a little outline going. Now, now you know you can leave that if you want, but um, and I don't like it. <laughs> so I go to a refine mat. Drop that in there. Um, I get rid of decontaminate edge colors and use motion bird. Don't want that. And what I do is pretty much I increase the choke. And yeah, as you can see, maybe drop the feather to 10 so it won't be as smooth, less blurry. There you go. So. You see the difference just to get rid of that little color that we had. And also another thing is if you zoom in here, as you can see, like the dark areas, how we have kind of um the shades is kind of a jagged. You see the, the outlines here is pretty bad. So to fix that, you want to get a vector blur. And this one you get a uh, set the type to a perpendicular and then like uh, you don't need that much I've, I found like a negative number works in this case negative two and yeah that's basically it as you can see here it got rid of like that jagged edge look so I made it all more smooth now I found something about using the perpendicular vector blur is that you kind of create this it cuts out some of the image from like uh, once it, from the edge of your uh, comp right so it's a simple solution scale it up like maybe two points or something eh, done nothing major so it's cleaned up there and yeah that's basically it you know I try to keep everything as simple as possible all right now I say if you were like uh, watching in your comp and you notice you get like some kind of weird highlights here Say like right here in this area you can see they can appear here pretty much what we can do is pretty much just go back to your um, original comp and just reduce the edge feather you know you can probably drop that down to zero because like the it's like the blur from like the feather that's causing problems here so you can probably just leave that out if you're you know seeing that you're having too much problems and then you see you can see it gets rid of it so and like I said so you can like uh, lock this screen Go to your small comp where you have like the, you got the hard mixed, you have the normal and the hard mixed layers, you know, working together. And you can like adjust these as you see fit. I see so you can increase the brightness. You know, depending how much of like a detail you want in it. So, so I'm going to try to reduce it a bit.
Yeah, like I said, this is all subjective. You guys can do whatever you want. I'm just messing with it. So there you go. So unlock that. Do a brand preview. And there you go. I think it looks really, really cool. Now, if you notice that your um, smoke is having a lot of holes, say like right here, pretty much, you know, pretty much what's going on is you having a session of like the, um, the ink drop that pretty much breaks open. You know, it's creating too much of a transparency, so it's not solid here, right? So you can see it here as well. Yeah, then you can see it better, you know, what's going on. So I guess a quick fix for that is go back to your base comp. Uh, and then on your edge thin, put that at a negative number. So, so let's focus on this hole right here. Just pretty much at the end, made like a negative two. Yeah, there you go. Makes it more of a solid. So, let's do more negative three. Now, you know, it's gonna create a white border, but because we have the refined mat, you know, they're just gonna get rid of it. So it's not a big of a deal. Let's go back to our cartoon explosion comp. And like I said, see you have like the refined mats, so it gets rid of that extra edge that ex expanded out, so no big deal. So, and yeah, there you go. Cool, there you go. So that looks pretty awesome. Now, just because you know nothing's perfect, you're probably gonna notice that you still get like a few um, breaking points here but as you can see here it's pretty much more like the ink meets together you know it's gonna be some um, some tearing I guess that's what you call it but it's smoke I'm sure it's not perfect <laughs> right but um I'm pretty sure there's gonna be a lot of stuff going on so it's not gonna be that noticeable depending on how fast you're gonna have the smoke going but you know I'm just nitpicking the fuck out of this thing right now so that's so that's pretty much it if you guys want to add like a little bit more detail to it you know, uh, something that, you know, I did was select this comp, go to, you know, select it, go to edit, duplicate. Let's get the edge finder. You know, find edges. Get the fine edges, but as you can see, there's somewhat of a bluish tint to it. So let's get rid of any color by dropping another tint filter to it underneath that and mix it all black and white and then we can just uh, mess around with the transfer modes uh, let's try let's try multiply just to get rid of the white and pretty much what that does it kind of creates an outline you know if you know that's something that you want and of course because you get the tint filter here you can change the color of the outline to whatever you want you can mess around with the transparency and make it 50 so it won't be as solid but uh, you got somewhat of a somewhat of an outline going right just to make things more thicker if you want so like I said this is optional but it's really up to you and yeah I'm gonna leave it there so the cool thing about it you, know, you can render render this out as a PNG you know you get your transparency and all that good stuff you know so yeah um, I got nothing else to add so I'm gonna leave it here um, yeah, thanks for watching. I'm definitely gonna be making more stuff like this because you know I really like the look of it and not only that I got a friend of mine that he's a video game developer and he just created his first VR game So uh, he kind of gave me the idea of like doing more like uh, Creating assets for video games and all this stuff. So since I really like to do cartoon style VFX <laughs> I figure I might as well continue doing you know practicing this method of doing um, you know VFX so I can use it as an asset for either for you know side scrollers or just anything right so I like experimenting and doing all kinds of shit so yeah be sure to check out my buddy here his uh, YouTube channel is Iron Stomach I'll have the link in the description you guys can check out his uh, you know game and all the good stuff so yeah that's all I got for you alright there you go thanks again for watching really appreciate it be sure to share the video if you think uh, you know anybody else may benefit from this. So uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. I'll continue making more of these. So uh, you know, subscribe or check me out on Facebook, Instagram, and all that stuff. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.